Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be a bunch of different families rivaling to see who's on top at the end through negotiation and trading, sometimes attacking. We're talking about Game of Crowns here. This is from AEG, it's 49 players. The box says 45 minutes, but it actually plays a lot quicker than that. Let me show you how this card game, it's sort of a set collection and trading game. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, you get to select your house. House is basically a color and a symbol, and it has names and backstories and the rules about all these. All the factions are exactly the same. They have the exact same 10 cards. Now the game is played over three rounds and it's noted by this Raven token, or you can just start to play a longer game with six rounds, but three is pretty much fine. Now in this game, on your turn, you're doing one of two things. You're either exchanging in negotiation to try to trade cards with other players, or you're playing a card and playing an action. It's sort of a set collection where you're trying to gain certain sets of cards that will give you points at the end of the game. For example, the princess will give you one point at the end of the game for every knight you have. And it's not just your knights, you'll be gathering knights from other players. The trade will give you one point for each coinage card you have. Again, not just your cards, but other cards as well. The castellan will give you one point for each raven token that you have. The feud will give you one point for each feud card you have, if you have the least amount of feud cards. Knights and coinages are action cards, we'll get to those in just a moment. So let's say I do an exchange. I can put this princess down and go, I'm willing to get rid of a princess and what I really want is a Castellan. Anyone willing to offer a Castellan? And someone says, no, nah, actually no, but here's a feud card for you. And this other player would put this feud card here. And then maybe the next player says, no, nah, you know what? I really don't want to do that either. This player is gonna offer you a coinage card. So we've got me and the two people. Now, at this time, I can either take this offer and swap my princess for one of these two cards. Now these players are, are, are forced to play at least one card down. Now there's some talking and negotiation going on maybe before even any cards are played in the first place or when cards are being played down. Now if I want, I can accept one of these or I can, um, I can go right to the Raven and say, does anyone want to sweeten the pot with Ravens? And so this player might say, yeah, I'll give you a Raven. We'll talk about what these do later. Or this player could actually say, you know what? I'm also willing to give a coinage card. Now if this player plays a second card, everybody else is forced uh, to, 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 to also do it. So someone might say, fine, I'll give you a, you know, a Castellan, like you asked for originally, and because I really like that coinage. And the other player might say, you know what, I'll just, uh, I'll give you another coinage card. How about that? And so at this point, uh, they go around and if they, if, if the princess doesn't take anything right off the bat, they have an option to sweeten the pot with ravens. Maybe this one does one or two. Maybe this one does none, and I say, you know what? I want the Ravens, I'll take the Castellan Feud, I'll take these, and these will go to them, and this player gets his card back. And that's how an exchange works. So let's say it's been, everyone took a turn, it's gone all the way around, everyone's done an exchange or played a card. It's my turn again, I'm gonna play a card. In this case, it's a coinage, and I can exchange it with a card taken randomly from the player uh, hand of, an, of my choice. So I could go to another player, I would randomly take a card from his, and let's say I, uh, I draw a princess. Well, okay, well he got the coinage and I randomly draw a princess. The princess, this would go in my hand. Now because I have this princess, I'm probably going to want to collect knights. And that's how, that's one of the cards that you could play for an action. That would be my entire turn. But maybe later on I play a different one, which is a knight. And this is where an attack happens. Now when I do this, I attack the player of my choice and then players vote whether they're for the, uh, the attacker or defender. I would be the attacker. And let's say I was fighting against this uh, family, which was the defender. So once the attack happens, everyone votes. Everyone has an attack or defend card, and I would vote. And the other two players would vote who they're going for, the attacker or the defender. And obviously negotiations are going on for further things as well. Now, once uh, that's done, everybody reveals. We see attacker, we see defender, we see defender. Right now the defense would win. But going in clockwise order, and starting with the defender that I was attacking, they get to add, if they want, ravens. And these all add a point. This would be an additional point. So it would be one, two, three three points for defense. If he put one, it'd be four points for defense. But these guys don't want to spend the raven, so they put them there. And the attacker does add a raven. So now it's tied, two to two. The attacker wins ties, so this would happen and the attacker would actually win the victory. Now the person who lost gets any raven token. So 
Uh, the defender would get the river token, we'd take these cards back. The knight would be discarded out of the game. Now an attacker can vote for a defender, and the defender could vote for an attacker because they might want to lose to gain Raven tokens because they may have the Castellan that gets them Raven, so that can happen as well. But essentially the, the loser takes the cards back, the knight's gone, they get any Raven tokens as a sort of a consolation prize, and then the victor gets to look at the player's hands of the person they just beat. They get to look at it and take whatever one card they want, or they can randomly take off a deck that's called the house deck. This is some other guys here, for example, at the end of the game, gain three points if you have the fewest cards than all of their players. Uh, discard this card at the start of any player's turn and take half of their Raven's token, round it down. At the end of the game, gain two points for each jester you have if you have the most, otherwise you lose two points. Uh, at the end of the game, gain one victory point for each princess in both adjacent players' hands. Or at the end of the game, gain one victory point for each card you have from different players. Now those are the unique different ones that are in there. There's multiple copies of some of them. And that's pretty much it. You're making an exchange, or you're playing one of those two cards. You're doing what we just saw. We get to the end, people reveal their cards, and they pound up all the points of all the possibilities of the abilities that they still have in their hands, and all the points that we showed you at the beginning. The one with the most points is the winner. Now, I was really interested in this because it sounds so fascinating to me by a description of negotiating and trading and backstabbing and treachery and voting and getting on people's sides. Uh, but for me, the game fell really flat. Um, the negotiations part of it wasn't nearly as interesting as I had hoped. Um, you know, you're asking somebody to give you something, they may give you something, or a lot of times they'll just go, I'll just give you the same card back that you're giving. I, I don't want that. And sometimes you can just get stuck with that. Um, offering extra things, yeah, it happened once in a while. The Ravens tokens, eh, maybe sometimes. But th the trading never seemed to really go over the top the way I hoped it would. And then you get to the attacking, and the attacking almost seems... I don't know. It's, I don't get it. So you're, you attack somebody, and you're trying to get other people to attack with you, and the only thing you can give them or trade them is like, hey, I'll do something for you later. I'll trade you a card that you want. There's no real currency. Sure, there's Ravens, but come on. Nobody really wants to give those things up. And it's it's... It's so weird that you get on somebody else's side, which almost never happened because they didn't want to... Why would they do that? Why would they ever get on somebody else's side? Uh, sure, the consolation prize of getting the Ravens is cool for the defeater, but still, uh, the attacking wasn't great, the negotiation wasn't great, the set collection was actually kind of cool. It's like, oh, well, which strategy do I want to go with? Uh, I'm going to go with the Castellans and try to get a bunch of Ravens. The problem is, you have... Because it's only three rounds long, of course you could play a long game, but who, I, I wouldn't recommend it. You play a three-round game and you have to kind of go after a strategy very quickly and stick with that strategy. There's no time to pivot to a different strategy. And once people see what you're going for, they're not going to help you out and give you what you need. So um, overall, it was just a game that I did not enjoy. Uh, I, I had high hopes for it, but the attacking wasn't good. The negotiation wasn't good. The set, set collection's good, but it was, it was just okay, barely okay in the end. Um, so if, if you've seen the overview and this is for you, this is definitely a try before you buy. Because uh, everything that I had hoped this was, it was none of it. And that's Game of uh, Crowns. Now remember, let's spread love of board games and through board games.